Hi guys, I hope you all are doing fine. Today I'm back with another podcast and trust me, this podcast is going to be very, very interesting and amazing because we have Dr. Mugda with us, who is a full-time neurosurgeon and she's going to answer our questions and she'll also tell us about her life, her journey, everything you need to know about neurosurgery. So let's dig into the podcast and welcome her. Hi, Dr. Mugda. How are you? I'm good. How are you, Divya? I'm amazing. So we'll start this podcast with a small introduction of yours. Um, hi, my name is uh, Dr. Mukta Sachteva. I am a full-time neurosurgeon working in Germany. Um, I'm also a mother and um, live with my husband and two kids. Amazing. So we'll start with the questions now. So the first question is, how do you make a schedule for yourself with your kids in your mind? Because like, as you mentioned, you have kids. So yeah. Mm-hmm. So um, it's it's a lot of planning um, and a lot of uh, teamwork with my husband uh, because we both basically take care of everything as far as the children are concerned. Normally people have uh, grandparents and everything, but we don't have that here. So I, uh, I and my husband plan a week, like a week ahead and plan our appointments and what we're planning to do in the week, uh, a week ahead. And that's how it works. Otherwise uh, it can't work. <laughs> exactly. And like when you are just saying that you have appointments and stuff. So like how, how many surgeries do you manage or like how much workload is there in your week? So, um, uh, As a full-time neurosurgeon in Germany, you work 42 hours a week. That's basically eight hours a day. Um, And uh, along with that, um, I have 24-hour calls, which means um, I go in the morning and come back the next day morning. Um, there's, There's no particular schedule as to how many surgeries I personally have a day. It depends because we are a team of neurosurgeons. Um, The surgeries are divided into the different neurosurgeons and you could have a surgery today, maybe not tomorrow. It depends, but you get to know your schedule like a day before. Okay. And the next question was really asked on my Instagram. So like majority of my followers are studying psychology. So the question was, can neurosurgery be performed for mental illnesses? Uh, There is uh, currently research going on with uh, deep brain stimulation, especially for depression. Um, And there are some surgeons who do that. I don't do uh, I don't do that, unfortunately, but I I know that it exists. Okay. so what do you feel when you complete a surgery with like a positive outcome? (laughs) Obviously, um, very happy. I mean, um, The one thing that uh, a surgeon or a doctor always needs to remember is that the fact that the patient should always come um, first and you should always think about the patient first and do everything so that you do no harm, like it's said for uh, for medicine. And obviously a positive outcome is always um, ecstatic. (laughs) And like, I feel that is the only feeling we do what we do. For, like, That's exactly uh, exactly. I mean, uh, it it makes it it makes it all worthwhile. Yeah, and like, have it ever happened when you weren't able to save the person, and like, how did it feel that time? Um, it's a very challenging situation. Um, it's very difficult to deal with such uh, situations, even as a doctor yourself. Obviously, it's more difficult for the relatives of the of the patient and breaking the news to the patient's relatives and everyone. But um, it's very, um, it's very difficult to deal with it as a doctor yourself too. Uh, yeah. not having, not having been able to do what you wanted to do for the patient for, for, to do something good. And like, I want to ask a question, like, has it changed like the chances of people being saved after the surgeries if we compare it from past? especially brain surgeries? Uh, So a lot has changed over the 
say over the last 100 years yeah but um the last let's say the last 10 20 years has not been so much of a difference as far as survival um, morbidity and mortality is concerned in neurosurgery but uh, generally neurosurgery is a very very challenging field and uh, the morbidity and mortality is much higher in neurosurgery as compared to many other surgical fields uh, being it uh, a, I mean, a brain bleed can be totally disastrous for a patient. Uh, there are so, there are so many brain bleeds that cause death within 24 hours, in at least 25 percent of uh, cases. So it's 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 really difficult, uh, but that's that's the way it is. Yeah, and like, how do you deliver the news of a loss during surgery to the patient's family? Um, I must say, thank God we are trained for that. But I think uh, however much training you have, um, it's not an easy task. You need to have done it a few times to be able to do it at all. Mm -hmm. Um, You have to be very empathetic and um, but not involve yourself in the situation either. So, you know, try to be there but keep a distance too. Yeah. And like, how do you handle working in a physically and mentally demanding field? And like, does your profession have any impact on your own mental illness? Oh, definitely. And um, I think that's what uh, inspired me to start my Instagram page because um, it really, it really gets to you at some point. uh, And uh, you need to keep, you need to keep going. You need to learn from all of that and keep moving on and uh, make sure that your mental health is at par. And uh, that's how my page helps me. It helps me keep that positive attitude for a good amount of time and uh, to pull through. And maybe if I can help any one person with my posts, I'll be very happy. Very happy. And guys, I, everyone seeing this podcast, I want to tell you that Dr. Mukda has an amazing Instagram page. I link your Instagram link below down in this video. And she posts about informative stuff for life. And like, it's amazing. It's so positive. Even like before starting this podcast, I was just scrolling through your Instagram to see like what you posted. <laughs> So, yeah. yeah. So we'll head to the last question for the day. So that's: Are there any disadvantage of being a neurosurgeon, especially for women? Um, neurosurgery is a very demanding field, and a, I must say, when I decided I wanted to do neurosurgery, my mentor is uh, actually told me not to do it. He's like, uh, "You're a woman. You want to have a family." neurosurgery is not for you and as uh, yeah they would say in German um, Schädel basically means a direct translation um, someone with a thick skull okay. <laughs> or big head <laughs> okay. as big headed as I was then and even now I was like no I'll prove you wrong and um, I think I did prove him wrong and he's very happy that I was able to prove him wrong because I had a lot of potential in me and he wanted to see that uh, develop. Uh, The only thing he was worried about is how it will work out with family. It does. I mean, there are a lot of uh, drawbacks as a, uh, as a woman, there are a lot of things that you have to do uh, that men don't have to worry about or even think about. Uh, But I must say, I don't do it alone. I uh, do it with my husband. I have a very supportive husband um, who does it all with me. And without him, uh, my neurosurgery or me as my existence wouldn't exist. Right. You know, when you are working hard and you just need one hand, one support person in your life. Exactly. And like Mm -hmm. that just changes the whole thing. That just changes the balance. Yeah, that brings... Uh, that brings the equation um, right yeah (laughs) amazing and it's so like when I hear your story like right now also even I have one unit neurosurgery and it's so demanding like 
handling my life, handling my workload. It's so tough right now. And you with kids, your family and everything. Like, you know, the main thing is how you balance it. And mm. I just hope that people who are watching this podcast, even if this helps them even 1% with their life, with their balancing and everything. That would be great. Exactly. <laughs> that would be great. Yeah. I mean, it's possible. You need to have the right kind of support. You definitely need to have the right kind of support. Otherwise, it's not possible. But um, you need to have to want to do it. You need to love neurosurgery to want to be a neurosurgeon and to stay a neurosurgeon because I know a lot of women who gave up after doing neurosurgery and decided to do something else afterwards so um, I am proud that I was able to pull through but it's not a it's not a one-man show yeah that is true and like I'm very glad you were here in this podcast with me Thank you so much yeah. for your time, for your efforts, for your words. It means yeah, a lot. Thank you so much, Divya. And uh, to everyone who is viewing this podcast, I would also like to tell you that Divya has a wonderful Instagram page. I was inspired by her page too. Thank you so much. Um, to keep doing what I was doing. Please go visit. Um, have a nice time. Thank you so much, Dr. Mukda. And I'll link everything down below her Instagram ID, everything. So you can just go and have a look. Thank you so much again. Thank you. Yeah. Have a nice day. You too. Bye. Bye.